Necrochasm was ass in D1, and in D2, it actually seems usable. I think the best part is that it technically counts as a Weapon of Sorrow. I believe that's what Thorn and Osteo and now Necrochasm are classified as, at least lore-wise, because the poison that these weapons apply works with Necrotic Grips. With Necrochasm, this obviously deals a ton more damage than things like Thorn and Osteo up front, since it's an explosion rather than just the poison, but in situations where the Thrall explosion doesn't kill, whether you're under power or the explosion just doesn't kill a major or something, that's where the Necrotic Grip damage will kick in. And then you can also pair this build with Shackle Grenades and Mindspun Invocation on Strand, so that enemies that do end up dying are then suspending everything else nearby. So all in all, we're constantly exploding enemies with Necrochasm, spreading poison damage with Necrotic Grips, and immobilizing everything with Suspend on every single weapon kill that we get. Mindspun Invocation also lasts for 25 whole seconds, not sure why it lasts so long, but even with the 20% nerf to Threat of Generation, this still gives us tons of time to get our Shackle Grenade fully back and then chain this suspending effect. And then on top of all of this, we're still keeping most of what makes the Strand DPS rotation good. So you're easily able to take this build into pretty much any raid encounter and use it effectively for ad clear and then still have one of the best DPS setups. Overall, this build is great, and I've been using Necrochasm a ton lately. It's just super fun to use overall, so I wanted to put out a video that you guys could use to take into Crota's End and make it a joke of a raid. As always, there will be a dim link below if you guys just want to click and apply this yourself, and a Mobilytics link if you guys want more info on the build and the rotation. We're super close to 80k subs on the channel as well, so if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure to drop a quick like and sub down below. Taking a look over at Necrochasm first, with this equipped, your goal is to really just get precision final blows to trigger a cursed thrall explosion. And then when that explosion happens, if it does kill an enemy, that's also going to fully refill your magazine. With that, you can also use the perk Desperation so that anytime after a precision final blow, even if you don't manage to refill your magazine, you can reload manually and then you get a period of time where you have increased stability, aim assist, and then most importantly, much higher RPM with the weapon, taking it from, I would imagine, a 720 RPM all the way up to a 900 RPM, which makes it feel much more like an SMG. Taking a look at the Brood Weaver subclass, we are obviously on Needlestorm. It's the only option, but this is really good against things like Sword Bearers and then obviously Ear Ute and even Crota within the new raid. So this is a great super. And then in terms of our other abilities, Healing Rift is going to be the best option for our survivability because we do lack healing options when on Strand. Obviously, Arcane Needles are really good, and these do pair with Necrotic Grips to spread poison around and unraveling rounds to enemies. And then lastly, we are on Shackle Grenades so that we can consume these and spread Suspend to nearby enemies. The way that we're actually going to be spreading Suspend, like you've seen in the background gameplay for this video, is with Mindspun Invocation. So absolutely make sure you have this aspect on. With this, holding our grenade in while it's on Shackle is going to consume it and give us the Weaver's Trance buff. In Weaver's Trance, I have no idea why it lasts as long as it does, but we get this to last for 25 seconds, where any final blow while this is active is going to create a suspending detonation, and then everything nearby, if it gets hit by that detonation, is instantly being suspended. Second to this, we are also running the Wanderer. We're really just specced into suspending as many enemies as possible. So the Wanderer is going to make it so that our Tangles, whether we throw them or even just detonate them wherever they lay, are going to also be suspending nearby enemies. When it comes to the fragments, especially with the raid being released, I wanted this to still work extremely well for like the mid play, but then also for a boss damage rotation. So as you're going to see, we are still running Thread of Ascent. With this, anytime we use our grenade, it will instantly reload the currently equipped weapon that we have on, making it really effective in a rocket rotation. To actually get our grenades back, we are also using Thread of Generation. Dealing damage is going to give grenade energy, which is going to scale based on the damage that we're dealing. After this, just for survivability, we do also have Thread of Wording. Picking up an Orb of Power is going to give Woven Mail, which sits at like 55% damage reduction. So this is amazing, especially for surviving in something like a raid. And then lastly, because it is mainly a suspending build, we do have Thread of Continuity. So that suspend effects applied to targets last a bit longer. Obviously, Generation and a Shackle Grenade versus a Grapple Grenade is going to be much worse. A Grapple is going to be better because it has a way shorter cooldown. And when you use this against the ground just for that quick reload, you get like half your energy straight back. That being said, the way I look at it, we'd rather have the mid game with Shackle and Infinite Suspend. And if you get to use this once or maybe twice during a damage rotation, it's better than not using it. So I think it's a better option to run. 
mod wise here's everything i'm using with the build if you guys want to pause the video take a screenshot quick apply it yourself or as always there will be a dim link and a mobilytics link down in the description below starting things off on my helmet i do have one copy of heavy ammo finder and a heavy ammo scout since we're relying on primary exotic ad clear this is going to effectively make ammo for us and teammates even though they're finder bricks it should still be a good amount of ammo for damage phases and then since it's still a kinetic weapon with necrochasm we are using kinetic siphon once again, with the build, we are obviously using Necrotic Grips, as I mentioned in the intro. This just makes it so that the Cursed Thrall explosions, if they don't kill, are spreading a higher tick rate of poison to get kills and pair this with Mind Spun Invocation so that we can spread Suspend effectively. The thing that I thought worked best with the build was obviously using Impact Induction so that our melee damage and Unraveling Rounds are going to reduce the grenade cooldown that we have on top of that of generation and then obviously since our shackles don't actually make orbs of power we're just using heavy handed so that we can get orbs through our melee final blows as well on my chest piece as always i have three copies of damage reduction mods especially for end game content the only exception is because it's kind of a sword meta against crota i'd recommend running one or two copies of lucent blades if you are killing with a sword on my boots, I have recuperation so that every orb of power I pick up on top of giving us woven mail is giving 70 HP back, which is like 30 to 40% of our health. With this, innervation gives us 10% of our grenade straight back every orb of power we pick up. And then also stacks on stacks makes it so that these orbs, instead of giving one armor charge stack, now they give two stacks by default. Lastly, on my class item, we're again specced into getting our grenade back much more consistently through Bomber. This gives, I think, 20% at one copy to our grenade whenever we place down our Rift. We do use our armor charge stacks for special finishes so that we can spam special during a damage phase or even just for ad clear against tankier enemies and for our teammates. And then lastly, we always use powerful attraction so that if there's a ton of orbs of power nearby or we don't want to run somewhere sketchy to pick up an orb, we can plant our Rift down, get healing through that, and then pick all those orbs of power up right away. That is pretty much it for the build. The only other major thing I didn't mention is that the catalyst for Necrochasm, which is pretty easy to get, just gives it outlaw. I will also have a link below to a full catalyst guide if you guys are interested, but I honestly feel like the catalyst just sucks. The only downside I see to this weapon is that getting precision kills on a high RPM weapon happens much less often than like hand cannons or scouts, so you don't really get that exotic effect as often as you'd like. Plus, certain enemy types, like Vex for example, can be extremely hard to land crits on. Using Suspend makes things way easier, which is why I paired it with Necrochasm in the build, but I really wish the Catalyst allowed for any kills to cause the explosion, or at the very least, like an escalating chance on body shot kills. Otherwise, for harder pieces of content, I think things like Trinity Ghoul and Sunshot and other really simple, easy ad clear exotics are just going to end up outperforming this thing. Let me know your thoughts on Crota's End and Necrochasm in the comments below, though, and I do also stream almost every night over on my Twitch. A link to that is in the description below if you guys ever want to stop by, hang out, and game. As always, have a good one, guys. Peace.